Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, it doesn't seem like an overly difficult math problem. Then we have some fractions and some addition, uh, division, and multiplication going on as well. But I'm saying that 99% will get this wrong. Well, this might be uh, too big of a percentage. Maybe um, it might be less, but I would say for sure the majority of people would get this wrong for one reason or another. Now, if you want to go ahead and uh, see what answer you come up with, I think that would be good use of your time if you're going to stick around for a couple minutes. But obviously, I'm going to solve this problem, but I want you to think about it and see what you know about fractions. Now, um, before we get going, clearly you're going to need to know how to add, divide, and multiply fractions, and then we'll kind of work our way uh, through this problem. But there's some other things going on as well. So I'm going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're taking any one of those courses, I can definitely help you out uh, if you are struggling. If you are preparing for any kind of test that has math on it, uh, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, Alex exam, AccuPlace or CLEP exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare so you can pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any uh, math notes, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave uh, links to all of this stuff, including my notes, in the description of this video. But hopefully you don't need my math notes because this is one of the most important things you need, be, need to be doing as a math student. I've been teaching math for decades, and really the secret to doing well in math is taking outstanding notes. Okay, so we're going to get into this problem now. If you want to um, go ahead and attempt it, um, I would suggest pausing the video. But let's uh, first talk about this, okay? So I have a bit of a clue here, okay? I'm going to kind of set you up for success, and then you, uh, I'm going to give you where I think the majority of people would make a mistake. Okay, and I think it has to do with this. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I know. You know, when you teach math for so many years, you just see these kind of trends. So what am I talking about here? This is a little clue. I have, uh, it's called PEMDAS, all right? So uh, some of you might be like thinking, oh yeah, I remember that uh, little acronym. But this has to do with the order, the order of operations, order of operations. Now, what are we talking about, order of operations? It's not like an operation you go to the doctor and be like, okay, give me my knee surgery first and then my shoulder surgery a second. No, not that kind of operations. We're talking about mathematical operations. So that would be like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So things we do with numbers. So if I give you, if I give you like two numbers, two and seven, what can we do with them? Well, we could perform various mathematical operations. So these are the most common ones. Of course, we can... Um, a part of the order of operations is uh, powers and exponents and grouping symbols, etc. So I'm going to give you uh, a quick, quick uh, hint here that you really have to be careful and know your order of operations. So this little P-E-M-M-D-A-S, uh, you better be thinking about this, all right, before you start this problem, okay? So I'm going to explain more of the order of operations here in a second, but I'm telling you right now that a good majority of people... Uh, if they're going to make this error, they're going to make this uh, with this order of operations. So, um, again, I'll fully explain PEMDAS here in one second, but I'm just kind of forewarning you to pay extra special attention as you do this problem. Okay, so let's get to it. I'm going to show you the solution now. So if you don't want to see it, uh, pause the video. All right, so here we go. Now, you see that I'm underlining something right here. Let's actually write the uh, order of operations, P-E-M-D-A-S. Okay, so we have addition, division, and multiplication. So in terms of this PEMDAS, the P stands for parentheses, okay, or grouping symbols. So there's no parentheses in our original problem. Uh, e stands for powers and exponents. And then we have M and we have D. Okay, and I say uh, this part of the problem is where a lot of people would confuse. Uh, uh, it's not really maybe the fraction uh, mechanics of doing this problem, the actual computations with the uh, fractions. It's the order of operations. So what does the M and D mean? Now, most people, hopefully not all people, if you're one of these people that um, have not confused this, then that's excellent. 
most people uh, think that you have to do M before the D. In other words, you always do multiplication before division. All right, that is not the case. All right, when we're looking at the order of operations, you got to look at these two um, groups of letters, M and D, as what comes first from left to right. So we're going to do multiplication before division if it uh, if it's first from left to right. However, if division is first, like in this case, we are going to do division before multiplication. So PEMDAS can, if you think about it, all right, we can actually even write this acronym this way. Uh, we're always going to do parentheses and powers. That's uh, always the case. But this M and D could be D M. Okay, if you have uh, division before multiplication, and same thing with addition and subtraction. Sometimes if subtraction comes first from left to right before addition, we can write it this way. So depending on how you learn or the order of operations, um, you know, hopefully your teacher taught you in this uh, in, a, in a way where you didn't confuse this. But this is a very common uh, little detail that a lot of students forget. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into this problem. Now, if you think if you made this error and you did the multiplication first, well, you know, you can go ahead and correct this and, and see what you come up with uh, at the end because you still might have trouble with the fractions, okay? All right, so let's get into it. So now that I know the order of operations, I have one-third plus two-fifths divided by one-half. You can see I need to do this first, okay? This part of the problem first. That's division. It's coming for multiplication. So I'm going to put that in parentheses, okay? That's always a good idea to do. When you're working with like mathematical expressions, you could put this in parentheses just to kind of uh, be very, very um, in control of your work and say, I got to do this first. Okay, so there's no problem with you putting in parentheses into or grouping symbols into your own problem just so you can kind of mentally organize what you need to do. Okay, so now we're going to have to get into how to divide fractions. So how do we divide fractions? Well, we write the first fraction, two-fifths, and then we got to change this uh, division operation to multiplication. Okay, so we're going to change division to multiplication, but we're going to um, have to switch this fraction, flip it upside down. We call that finding the reciprocal. So we have one-half, and when I flip it upside down, that becomes two over one. So I change this division to multiplication by... Um, flipping this frac uh, the fraction to the right of the division operator, okay? All right, so hopefully you're with me. Now let's kind of focus in on this part of the problem. So I have two-fifths times two over one. So two times two, that's going to be four. This is how we multiply fractions now. We multiply the respective numerators and the respective denominators. So two times two is four. Five times one is five. So now we have one-third. There's our one-third. Here, we did this multiplication, that is four-fifths, and then we're going to multiply by this three-fourths, all right? Okay, so now this uh, hopefully should be fairly easy now that I showed you how to multiply uh, fractions. Uh, the next step is we have addition and multiplication. We're clearly going to have to do the multiplication before the addition, so we're going to go ahead and do this part of the problem. Again, I'm putting in some parentheses here to make it nice and easy. Now, you can... When you're multiplying uh, fractions, yeah, I could go like this times this. That's a technically what we're doing. So it would be 12 over 20. But a lot of you um, already know how to multiply fractions. And we could cross-cancel these factors right here, 4 and 4. So we're, we're left with 3 fifths. Okay, now, of course, I could reduce this down to 3 fifths. Uh, but if you saw this as an opportunity to cross-cancel the 4s and you're left with 3 fifths, that is good as well. Okay, so we're down to this part of the problem. We have one-third. Let's just review. We have one-third, and then we did this part, this multiplication, and we have three-fifths. So now we have to figure out what uh, one-third plus three-fifths is. So I'm going to show you two ways. The first is uh, showing you how to work with the LCD. And then the second is I'm going to show you one of my favorite things in math, and that's the bow tie method to do fractions. I have... Tons of videos on all this stuff, by the way, order of operations, fractions, uh, how to add fractions, how to find an LCD in my pre-algebra playlist if you're struggling with any of this stuff. So let's get into first adding the, um, these fractions uh, using the lowest common denominator. So uh, I'm not going to get into it with this video because it would just be too long, but the LCD here is 15. Now, if you didn't know that, then you know you just need to review 
uh, what the LC, how to find the LCD and what it is, but we can't add or subtract fractions unless the denominators are the same. Okay, so here I have three and five. The denominators aren't the same, so we want to write uh, these fractions such that the denominators are the same. That denominator is called the lowest common denominator, so that's 15, okay? So I need to change this three to a 15, so I can do that by multiplying by five, but if I multiply the denominator by five, I'm gonna multiply the numerator by five, so that's how I get 5 15 Then here I'm gonna multiply this by three to get a 15, but I can also multiply the numerator by three as well. So I'm left with 5 15 plus 9 15 It's the same thing. These um, fractions are equivalent to one third and three fifths. However, I just wrote them such that they have the lowest common denominator. Now I can go ahead and add this. So how do I add uh, fractions when the denominators are the same? Well, I just keep one of the denominators and add the respective enum uh, numerators. So that's five plus nine is 14. That is the answer. Now, if you got this right all on your own and you're absolutely certain about all the steps, especially the order of operations, then I must congratulate you with a super duper happy face, a good old 19. 1986 Mohawk, an A+, plus, a few stars to make you feel extra special, and a 100%, okay? That's very, very good. It shows me that you know how to work with fractions, but uh, probably even more importantly that you understand uh, the order of operations, so excellent, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and erase this little happy face just so I have room to show you the alternative way to add these fractions using the bow tie method. Now, you can... Um, uh, check out a video. I think the title of it um, is Best Fraction Hack Ever. It's in my uh, pre-algebra playlist, but I think that thing has like over a million views. Uh, you know, a lot of people struggle with fractions. It's one of these things that uh, it's not like overly difficult. It's just that people confuse the steps. You know, they just forget, okay, because we get away from doing fractions, especially uh, away from like, you know, when you're past elementary school because we have our calculator. But this is another way you can add or subtract fractions. It's called the bow tie method. So the way it works is this. Um, you're going to start here from the bottom right. Okay, this denominator, you're going to multiply this way. Okay, then I'm going to multiply this way. You can see that this kind of looks like a bow tie. And then I'm gonna multiply like so. So let's go ahead and do this now. So five times one is five. Now this is an addition problem, so I'm gonna put a plus sign. This is three times three. This is what I do next. You gotta do it in this precise uh, order. Three times three is nine. Looks pretty familiar, five and nine. Well, what you just did right here is find the numerator. We're gonna put this over our denominator and we're gonna go this way. Okay, three times five is 15. And look at that, five plus nine is 14 over 15, the same answer. So super easy way to add and subtract fractions. The only um, issue downside with the bow tie method is sometimes you end up with the denominator. It is not the lowest common denominator, so just make sure you fully reduce. But this is a fantastic technique uh, to use, not only with um, uh, arithmetic, dealing with actually uh, with actual numeric fractions, but also with variable fractions in algebra. Okay, so, you know, when you look at this at first glance, most people might not give this problem its due respect. They say, oh, this is just basic arithmetic. I can do this. It's not that hard. Well, you know, even arithmetic can get quite challenging if you don't fully understand, you know, how to work with the order of operations and all the little details. you got to reinforce this and keep reviewing this because if you're taking a more advanced math like algebra and beyond, you know, you're going to be using arithmetic, okay? And fractions are everywhere. So hopefully this was a good little review for you. And if you didn't get this um, right, I certainly wouldn't feel bad. I would say probably the good majority of people made an error somewhere along the way. The whole idea is to realize what you did wrong so you don't make that mistake again. And if that is the case and you like this video, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So those are all there for you. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.